Okay, thank you for um, uh, asking me to do this. Um, a very, very interesting area, something that comes up every time we have a uh, exams committee meeting before results are released. Um, and we do um, have a look at you know, why there might be reasons why um, there are differential attainments seen in some of the exams. So what I'm planning to do here is just to uh, do a quick gallop through uh, some data that we um, have collected uh, and we continually collect and and see what you can make of it. Um, <clears throat> so we we have been collecting formal data over the last um, seven, eight years uh, for each examination uh, where we have information in terms of obviously the pass rates uh, related to a few parameters and, and demographics. And we send some of this information to the GMC uh, for their analysis, but um, also for our own benefit, um, you know, we, we do keep an eye on it for uh, analysis that might help us to refine exams. And we are continually looking at, at trends. Um, so in preparation for this uh, talk, um, I was considering what sort of information I might be able to, uh, to glean uh, quite easily. Um, and some of the parameters that I was considering were things like overseas versus uh, UK, uh, male, female uh, differentials, if there were any uh, ethnicity, uh, regional variations in UK, because I know that uh, the GMC looks at pass rates by deanery. Um, another Im important um, thing to look at would be the stage at which the trainee is uh, when they first attempt the exam. Um, and then special needs versus no special needs in a way we've had to make uh, reasonable adjustments. Um, and uh, an important one would be where we would see if there were any common denominators in, in candidates who have failed more than three times. Um, and there could be something there that we could look at, which might help them in their fourth uh, uh, attempt. And also looking at um, candidates if when they're in program or out of program, and that sort of um, information is not readily available in, in our college um, data. Um, we get reasonable data for the larger specialties like histopath, uh, hematology, clinical biochemistry. Um, the data for the smaller uh, specialties provide limited information and uh, may not necessarily show the trends that we uh, want to look at. And some of the data does depend on uh, what's been declared by candidates. Uh, so there, there are gaps in, in, in some areas of the data. And whenever we are trying to analyze this, we obviously need to be mindful that there are many other factors that um, might result in differential attainment. Um, and I think there is a AOMRC uh, document on attainment gap, which is certainly worth looking at. I'm not sure whether it's been released or it's about to be released. Um, and there may be some room to look at data changes related to uh, COVID. Uh, so we haven't formally uh, looked at this, but it certainly comes up in our um, <clears throat> exams committee meeting when we are trying to figure out why some pass rates are very different from previous years. So what I have um, um, tried to do here is I've gone for the three main um, specialties. Um, and for each one, uh, part one and part two, to see uh, if there are differential attainments. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single figure here, but what I've done is over the past uh, seven sit sittings, including spring 2022, um, given you some information in terms of percentage points here. And I've tried to split it uh, between UK candidates and then all candidates. So if you wanted to, have information on overseas candidates and you would have to do a subtraction from all minus UK and also uh, provided some um, gender related information as well. And to keep it short, what I've done is wherever there is a, a difference of more than 10 percentage points, I've highlighted in, in this uh, amber um, uh, color. So here, for instance, part one exam is to path, which is a a purely uh, multiple choice uh, exam, um, there seems to be uh, an increasing uh, differential attainment uh, in the last three sittings or so. Um, and that's 
uh, both in the UK and uh, overall as well. Um, so, you know, that's something to try and sort of delve into a bit more to see what the reason might be. In the part two, um, less of uh, uh, differential attainment and our part two in Histopath is, is uh, a practical, uh, which involves looking at slides, uh, but there are some uh, elements of oral exams in there as well. Um, and uh, some, some questions which require much more in the way of writing um, long answers. Um, but it's, it's pleasing to see that in, in the UK, there hasn't been a difference between uh, non-white and white candidates. And uh, equally, certainly in the last two sittings, uh, not so much um, uh, overall. Uh, there was obviously this spurious one um, in spring of 2021, where it seemed that overall the non-white uh, candidates did better. And it's possible because that included a large component of overseas candidates who could not do the exam in 2020 because of COVID. Um, and it's possible that the extra time that they had to prepare for it perhaps uh, meant that they performed much better. Going on to hematology, lots of amber here. Um, and the hematology uh, part one, I think, comprises MCQs and essays. So uh, uh, a lot of writing type of um, assessment. And it seems almost like consistently that um, the, the non-whites perform uh, much uh, worse uh, than, than the whites. Um, and, and that's both uh, in the UK and uh, overall. Um, so that's something that, you know, we'll definitely uh, need to look at, uh, obviously taking account of other factors that may be the cause of this. But when we move on to the part two uh, for hematology, um, that, that's a sort of a practical with various components in it. Um, there you see not so much difference except in the last two sittings. Um, and I'm not sure why that is, because I don't think the exam has changed uh, uh, in, in the last two years, um, but there certainly seems to be something creeping in um, uh, and in quite significantly where the uh, differences are, are up to about 16 uh, uh, percentage points. Um, so that's something that would, would be neat uh, to look at. Moving on to <clears throat> clinical biochemistry. Um, this is a MCQ exam. I think it was introduced around uh, 2017, 2018. Um, <clears throat> so what we've seen here um, is that uh, the pass rates are more or less okay uh, recently. And we had this uh, gap here where the uh, non-white seem to have done better. Um, and, and again, it, whether that's because they're, they're be better at uh, bookwork kind of uh, approach, I'm not sure. But if that was the case, then perhaps hematology would have been uh, showing the same sort of results. Um, and uh, overall also showing the sort of same sort of trend as well. Uh, so when we were discussing such results, uh, the question of uh, overseas candidates um, you know, does come up because it seems like uh, the, the overall pass rate seems to go down when there are more overseas candidates. And I've just picked on module two of uh, clinical biochemistry part two. Um, not much variation here, except surprisingly, some sort of a differential attainment between uh, males and females, and uh, absolutely no uh, idea, you know, why that why that might be. So that was just a bit of a synopsis of uh, the kind of uh, data that we can gather. There's much more that we could uh, uh, obtain. Um, so. Are there any measures that the RCPATH um, has tried to put in? So a few years ago, we did start um, uh, looking at uh, overseas candidates. So you know, we provided some webinars uh, for them to uh, not only explain to them you know, what the exams are, are about and what the formats are, but also to help them with you know, what uh, they can sort of read up uh, or what kind of practice they can do um, to have a better chance at the exam. And uh, I know that there is a mentoring scheme for international trainees as well, <clears throat> uh, facilitated by the Royal College. 
Um, we try and put as many example questions on website as, as possible. And I'm very sure that the newly launched uh, pathology portal uh, will help because uh, that has many uh, exam style uh, approaches to cases. And the idea is that we'll also upload uh, exam type uh, cases um, uh, in, in time. And they, there's no doubt that uh, feedback in general helps everyone. Um, and we were talking yesterday, for instance, about providing feedback uh, via our um, international advisors uh, through the international committee. Um, so they, they are the sort of kinds of things, um, you know, we, we could be uh, doing this. I know that um, for something like the histopath part two, um, some courses have started uh, abroad, uh, organized by UK uh, pathologists. Um, so that could be something that uh, could be useful. But at the same time, I also know that many courses that are run uh, in the UK, the overseas uh, candidates who are preparing for the exams uh, do come and attend those courses. So I don't think um, that is an issue uh, as much. So there, there may, may be other factors why uh, in some of the exams, the overseas candidates and, and the non-whites um, do less well than, than the whites. So that's... Um, a very quick run through um, uh, a, with a bit of the data over the last few sittings in, in the main specialties. Um, so I hope that's given you a bit of a glimpse um, as to uh, what's, what's happening.